The Prologue Pit of 100 Trials. It's probably the most well-known challenge in all of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and I'm just gonna put this out there, it is not the most well-known because it's easy. It's actually regarded as one of the hardest challenges for Thousand Year Door according to both the challenge wiki and clickbait titles on YouTube. And given that apparently a lot of you now know me as a Paper Mario challenge guy, I think I'd be letting you all down if I didn't stake my claim in this one as well. I'm sure there's some of you that already know exactly how this challenge run works and how to set it up, but for those of you that don't, I'll run through it real quick. Normally, you're not able to access the Pit of 100 Trials until you unlock the Paper Mode ability in Hooktail's Castle, which allows you to turn sideways and slip through the fence and actually make it into the dungeon. There are a few ways to get around this, with the most well-known being to use a glitch called Paper Storage to essentially store the Paper Mode ability being used between save files. The easiest way to do this is to hold R right after defeating Shadow Queen's Phase 1 and keep holding it until Phase 2 begins, and then you hold it all the way through the ending cinematic and credits until you're kicked back to the home screen. Then, while still holding R, you can load your prologue file and be in paper mode even though you never actually unlocked it. Using this, you can slip through the fence, airplane across, and get to the pit of 100 trials. There's another method to do it using super jump storage, but that one is a little harder to explain and a little less accessible if you're looking to try this challenge out for yourself. I had actually saved a copy of my file right before Shadow Queen from my last challenge playthrough so that I could do this glitch, but it got corrupted somehow, so I decided to just use a moon jump gecko code to get up to the Pit of 100 Trials. I'm not sure if this is going to ban me from being listed on the official wiki page for this challenge, but honestly, I'm just doing this challenge for me, and it has no actual effect on the challenge itself. I would really just rather do this than play through the entire game again just to enable this glitch, and I would recommend you do this too if you're playing on an emulator since it saves you a lot of time especially if you have to attempt this challenge multiple times. The only actual rules for this challenge are pretty simple. You have to complete the pit during the prologue, meaning that you can't trigger chapter 1 in any fashion at all, which, I mean, seems pretty obvious to me. And you have to complete the pit in one go, meaning that you can't go in, grind some levels, or acquire some items, and then leave and then try again. You have to go start to finish, and if you die, you reset and start over from the very beginning. Now let's get on to the prep for this challenge. Luckily this part of the video will also be pretty quick because there's really not that much stuff available to us right now. Using the certified Hood Classic Hazard Respawn glitch, I can hit a one frame jump into the water right here to trick the game into spawning Mario in the center of the room. Repeating this a second time gets me to the other half of Rogueport Sewers, which lets me climb back up to the west side, which you're not normally supposed to access during the prologue. This means that in total, all of the resources we have access to for the prologue pit are the two Rogueport item shops, the badge shop, the Pianza parlor, the power smash badge from Frankly, the pretty lucky in the sewers, 10 star pieces, and Dazzle the star piece trader. It's definitely worth noting that if you're willing to do the paper mode storage glitch twice, which means beating the Shadow Queen and holding R the entire time, twice, you can get into the town in Rogueport Sewers and get some more star pieces, and you can also reach the overpriced item shop. Since once again, I didn't feel like playing the entire game to do this glitch, I didn't have access to any of this. Another niche thing that you can do is buy a happy lucky lottery ticket and then set your clock forward until you win either a Power Plus badge, a Lucky Day badge, or both. While this is a pretty legit thing that you can do and I think is totally fine to do, to me it felt like it would significantly reduce the challenge so I decided to not abuse this. While I'm not going to be gambling in the lottery, I did hit up the slots because the Pianta Parlor lets us buy one of the most useful strategies for this entire run, Super Appeals. If Mario equips three of these badges, he can fill the entire star power bar in one appeal which is fantastic because we literally only have one star power gauge. The only way to grind Piantas at this point in the game is either to grind money and then buy some, or to use the slot machines, so I was all set to grind for a while on the slot machines to get the three super appeals I want, but I managed to hit the god luck. Oh! Let's go! Nice! That's gonna save so much time! Oh my god! Let's go! Oh, that's that feels better than the challenge that I'm about to undertake. Yes! I got another! Let's go! Okay, we're GG. That's all the money I'm gonna need, for sure. I swear to god, I have got to stop wasting this luck on video games. I went to the badge shop and I sold a couple extra super appeals and refund badges, and with that money I bought Last Stand, Last Stand P, and Unsimplifier. I also went ahead and bought a couple life shrooms from the West Side item shop, and then some Fright Masks from the regular item shop. Fright Masks don't exactly have the highest success rate against many of the later pit enemies, but it's a cheap last ditch effort option and there really isn't much else for me to fill my inventory with at this point anyways. 
I spent a while thinking over what badges I would buy from Dazzle with the 10 star pieces that I had, and I ended up deciding on Heartfinder and Pretty Lucky. Heartfinder is especially useful earlier in the pit so I can get a lot of extra health between battles that heals both Mario and Goombella, and then that second Pretty Lucky can stack with the first to give me a pretty decent chance to avoid enemy attacks. Those items that I just listed are pretty much all I have to make this happen, along with raw Mario and Goombella, and their default abilities. By far, the most important default ability for this run is Sweet Treat. It lets you heal up to 7 HP per character and 8 FP. Let me just tell you up front, you are going to be seeing a lot of Sweet Treat. Anyways, let's head into the pit and get this journey started. I got my big dramatic start to this challenge ruined by actually getting a mover on the very first floor, which is entertaining because I don't have enough money to skip any floors at all, so I just had to skip onward to floor 2. Thanks for nothing, you anticlimactic little sh**. The funny thing about doing this challenge in the prologue is that even the enemies on the first set of floors are relatively strong. The only enemy that I can one-shot throughout the entire pit without using FP is the Dull Bones, meaning that all of these battles are going to be pretty slow to grind through. There isn't a huge threat of dying on these floors because all of these enemies are relatively easy to hit the super guard timing for, and Heartfinder goes a long way in keeping me topped off between fights. Speaking of super guarding, if you're planning on attempting this challenge, your super guards need to be absolutely on point. If you aren't fairly confident that you can hit important super guards under pressure, this challenge might not be for you, because it is absolutely ridiculous how wrong things can go if you miss one or two important super guards. Also, as we go through this challenge, I'll go ahead and add pop-ups on the screen that show enemy stats and what my personal ranking for the super guard difficulty is for each of them. They all require a 3-frame window to hit, but there are some of them that have strong visual or audio cues, while others are just entirely based on feel. Anyways, I'll go ahead and gloss over these first floors as much as possible so we can get to the spicier floors faster. Gloombas are surprisingly the most annoying out of all these enemies, since 7 health takes a while to chew through with my weak-ass characters. Spinias and Spanias are pretty easy because they only deal 1 damage if you miss their super guards, and the same is pretty much true for Fuzzies. Dull Bones, like I mentioned, go down in a single hammer attack, so things were looking pretty okay for the first set of floors. The rewards you get every 10 floors are some of the strongest badges we're going to get access to, so I'll make sure to point out their usefulness as we unlock them. The Sleepy Stomp badge is the reward on floor 10, and unfortunately it's not all that good and I didn't end up using it at all. These floors immediately started to scare me for what was to come, because these enemies are unreasonably strong for little baby Mario right here. Paragloombas aren't really any harder than regular Gloombas, Dark Puffs are pretty easy to super guard and don't have a lot of health, Piters have a bit more health and have a pretty low damage output, and Clefs have to be super guarded or power smashed to kill. None of this sounds too bad, and honestly that's because it isn't. The main threat on this set of floors was surprisingly Pokies. Pokies have 4 health and can't be jumped on, meaning that Mario either has to use 2 hammer hits to kill them or power smash for a 1 hit kill. They do so much damage for this point in the pit, are hard to super guard, and can spawn in battles of up to 4 of them. Just to make things even better, they're also able to spawn reinforcements out of the ground, which I just do not understand from a lore perspective at all, but sure, okay, fine. I already almost took a loss here, and this is still basically the beginning of the pit. Besides the Pokies, I didn't have much trouble making it to floor 20 where I got the single best badge in any early game Thousand Year Door challenge. If you've watched any videos like that before, then you know exactly how overpowered Fire Drive is. It may cost 3 BP to equip and a huge 5 FP to use, but those pale in comparison to the actual power of this badge. It does 5 damage to the front enemy and then progressively deals 1 less damage as the flame goes back. It burns every enemy that it hits also, which is fantastic for getting more passive damage. As if this wasn't strong enough, the move also hits through defense, which is great news because this challenge would be pretty much impossible if it didn't. The only real limitations of this badge are the fact that it can't hit flying enemies and the fact that some enemies are immune to fire attacks. I immediately made space in my badge loadout for this and never took it off for the rest of the run because it's just that f***ing awesome. 
I would honestly consider these floors easier than the last set, and that's purely because of Fire Drive. Spiky Gloombas can do some pretty big damage for a basic enemy, but Fire Drive just obliterates lines of them pretty quickly. Bandits have the potential to be incredibly annoying since if they run away with even a single coin, the battle doesn't count as cleared and you have to refight it after, even if you defeat all the enemies on stage. Luckily, Fire Drive can drive a giant fiery dick into their proverbial asses and they stand no chance. Boos are similar in the fact that they get obliterated by Fire Drive, and Lakitus are actually the most annoying enemy on this set of floors. Since they're flying, they can only be jumped on by Mario and Goombella, and they have a chance at the end of each turn to block you from jumping on them altogether, which just stalls things out and makes it take way longer. Luckily, I find their attacks really easy to super guard, so it's pretty easy to win the War of Attrition. The spinies that Lakitu throws are luckily not immune to fire like other similar enemies are, so Fire Drive can clear out any of those that spawn in my way. The Floor 30 reward is the Zaptap badge, which isn't all that useful right now, but it's going to be tremendously helpful later, which we'll get to, of course. These floors are the last ones that I would even consider close to what you could call easy, so it's going to be heating up a lot from here. Right off the bat, we're attacked by a Dark Koopa, which is just a completely free enemy to take on since he can be knocked on his back and made useless for two turns, and there are also a couple of Flower Fuzzies. Flower Fuzzies aren't a big deal either since they just steal FP if you miss a Super Guard and their health can be knocked down before they deal much damage with their FP attacks. The real threat in this section showed up on the next floor and it was three Hyper Clefts. They can only be hit for one damage, even with a Power Smash, have four health, and can charge up to deal nine damage in a single hit. To top it all off, they're immune to fire drive. I had only upgraded my health to 15 at this point, so I could be two shot by a charge attack, and this is what the first turn looked like. See what happens. Ground find out. Oh god. Oh god. Oh sh. Oh sh. Oh f. This is not a good scenario for me, but I have a way out. If I missed more than one of these super guards, I was a dead man. I decided to play it safe and use a Thunder Rage that I bought from the merchant, killing all of them in one item. The next floor was easy enough, it had a Parabuzzy which is just a kind of advanced Koopa and then one Flower Fuzzy. Floor 34 was a little scarier though since it had four Shady Koopas. When these guys are flipped on their back, they can do an attack that's way more powerful than I honestly consider reasonable, but Fire Drive can kill them in just a couple turns without having to knock them over. The next few floors were just more combinations of the same enemies until 37, which had another three Hyper Clefts. I didn't have a Thunder Rage to bail me out this time, but I decided to try one of my Fright Masks, which scared away one out of three of them. From here on out, I decided to take them on like a man. If I missed both these Super Guards, I was done for, but luckily for me, this timing is pretty easy to hit, so I got both of them and just chipped away at their health until they went down. It was kind of a scary encounter, but trust me, it's still nothing compared to the later floors. On floor 40, you get the Pity Flower Badge, which is known as one of the worst, most useless badges in the entire game. It's actually so forgettable that I literally had to go back in the script and add this part at the very end because I forgot that I even got it. Fuck you, Pity Flower, you stupid piece of sh**. This set of floors has a lot of completely bullshit enemies, all for very different reasons. Dark Paratroopas are pretty much the same threat level as the regular Dark Koopas, which is non-existent. This battle also has our first look at spiky Parabuzzies, which are always just one of the worst enemies in any challenge run. I was trying to save my Thunder Rage for if I got in an encounter with four of these things, but the Hyperclefts were just too dangerous to be left alive. Without items, my only method of damaging these things is to Super Guard. It's not the easiest timing in the game, but overall I'm consistent enough with it that it's not too big of a deal. The goal in this challenge overall isn't to hit every single Super Guard possible, but rather just to hit enough of them to survive the difference in damage with Sweet Treat. The next floor had a little variety pack of enemies. Bulky bomb bombs are always funny in challenge runs because the best strategy is usually just to detonate them early. Everyone on screen will take 2 damage, but it's so worth the time save and a lot less damage than it would do if it could get fully charged up. The Poison Pokey is a slightly stronger version of the regular Pokey, but now we have Fire Drive so he barely even exists. His attacks do slightly more than the regular Pokey, and he can poison you or duplicate himself, but he's just not that big of an issue now. There was also another spiky Parabuzzy on this floor which had to be dealt with exactly the same way as the last one. Up next are some Lava Bubbles, which can only be hurt by the hammer and are actually healed by Fire Drive. Their attacks can be pretty tricky to super guard, but luckily two of them aren't too bad to deal with. The Dark Paratroopa in this battle was holding an HP plus P badge, which increased his health by 5. 
This doesn't really make any difference in the outcome of the battle because Dark Koopas are still useless, but then afterwards, something happened that may have made a difference to the outcome of this challenge. Yo? That's actually kind of big! Wait, that drop is actually kind of big! I can f***ing upgrade Goombella! Getting an HP plus P badge is actually huge because it gives Goombella her only form of upgrade ability in the prologue pit. It does cost a massive 6 BP to use, but having more health total spread across both characters is a really good upgrade. The odds of getting this drop were actually pretty insanely low. Going into the battle, there was only a 1% chance that this Dark Paratroopa could even be holding an HP plus P at all, and then after the battle there was only a 25% chance that he would even drop it. This means that getting this badge was essentially a 1 in 400 chance, which is pretty f***ing lucky to happen. Hitting a 1 in 400 drop is pretty cool on its own, but getting one that actually helps for the challenge is honestly insane. I don't have enough badge power to put it on right this moment, but I'm definitely going to be putting it on later. I already went over all the enemy types on these floors, and all the next battles were pretty much the same as the ones I just talked about. I used another Thunder Rage to deal with this battle of spiky parabuzzies and lava bubbles, and the rest was just good old brute forcing with super guards, fire drive, and normal attacks. I got the Strange Sack on floor 50, which as I'm sure you all know, doubles your inventory space from 10 slots to 20, but I literally never got enough items to use any of this extra space, so I'll just put a big old thumbs up on screen, and we can move on. Immediately on floor 51, I got slammed in the face by three badge bandits, which you'll know are a pain in the ass if you're familiar with this game. Getting a badge stolen from me and having them run away can get me stuck in a loop of infinitely fighting them, so I need to kill all of them before they can get away. Luckily, I had a random volt shroom that the crowd threw at me a bit ago, so I was able to give Mario the electric effect, which prevents bandits from stealing if I'm not able to hit the super guard. After a couple fire drives and burns, I figured a fire flower would be able to finish off the last two bandits, but oops, I miscounted. He used his ice storm on me, knocking Mario down to just one health. Luckily for me, he only had one health left himself and his burn killed him. Not even close, nope, not even a little bit. On floor 52, I found another mover who I immediately chucked some money at to move me down five floors. Yeah, sure, skipping floors is cheap, but you know what's cheaper? 30 coins, baby. 6 coins per floor really is a bargain, I gotta say. This mover let me skip past almost all of the floors that have moon clefts on them, which is fine by me because they would have taken forever to super guard to death, especially if I got in a battle with 4 of them. On floor 57, I encountered 4 ice puffs, which is pretty terrifying when you consider the fact that Mario has only 4 health left. I popped a sweet treat but fat fingered and was only able to heal up to 8. I knew my odds of surviving this next round weren't great so I went ahead and used my second to last fright mask and to my surprise, thank God. The next floor had two dark boos and a red chomp which just require some fire drive and super guarding action. Mario is also able to damage these red chomps with power smash for one so they can be chipped away at pretty easily overall. The final floor had a similar spread to the last one and all it took was some more super guard spamming to get through it. Floor 60 offers the double dip badge which isn't very useful when I barely have any damn items to use. This right here is the point in the prologue pit where each individual battle starts to feel like a mini boss, and hell, some of these are even harder than the game's chapter bosses. These enemies on the screen right here have a total of 46 health which is just disgusting. To make things even better, the front Lakitu spawned with a Thunder Rage which gives him a free 5 damage on each of my characters that's totally unblockable. As if he needed another advantage. These enemies attacks are really easy to hit the super guard timings for, in my opinion at least, but a flying enemy with 13 health automatically means we're going to be in for a long one here. I'd say this is probably the point in the pit where this challenge becomes a lot less accessible to the average person wanting to attempt this challenge. You still haven't gotten level ups quite fast enough to really have enough health to soak up a lot of hits, and the damage that these enemies can do is quite a bit higher than even the floors right before this. It's also pretty much from this point that you're just one turn of bad luck away from losing even if you didn't make a single mistake. F*** you. No, that's so bad! It's just for one turn, right?
Just so we're on the same page, not only did I get frozen twice, but each time the enemies thought out faster than me by two turns which gave them a chance to lay a billion points of damage on me while I was totally helpless. Thank god I still had my two life streams up to this point, otherwise it would have been Jover. I'm still so pissed about how this went down, what a terrible video game. Now all that was left for me to do was to climb my way back up from the brink of death, but luckily with some more clutch super guards, this challenge lived to see another floor. Also, this guy stalled for three more turns after all of that just to really stick it to me that I am at the mercy of RNG here. The next floor hit me with some dry bones and frost piranhas, which are both weak to fire drive, so they really can't be too bad. I am pretty terrible at hitting the dry bones super guards though, so they definitely still can get a lot of damage on me. Dark wizards make their first appearance on floor 63, but luckily fire drive can take them out quickly so they aren't a huge threat. The rest of the floors in this section just hit me with more combos of the same types of enemies, and Goombella ate my other life shroom like the f choke artist that she is, so anyways let's just grab the double dip P badge on floor 70 and move on. Wizards are a very similar threat level to Dark Wizards, which I'd say is a solid medium. Some of their attacks aren't too hard to super guard, while others are nearly impossible to anticipate in time. As per usual, Fire Drive can mow them down. Dark Koo Patrols specialize in having an unhinged amount of health, and they can also deal respectable damage. Goombella pretty much immediately died in this fight, so it was all up to Mario to get the job done here. I had to balance hitting them with Fire Drive, appealing, and using Sweet Treat in order to outlast their damage and heal FP back to keep using Fire Drive. Missing more than one Super Guard per turn would be incredibly detrimental, but fortunately my pretty lucky badges were working overtime to help me make sure that didn't happen. A super useful mechanic to point out for this run is that if Mario's partner is knocked down, all of the partner hearts in Sweet Treat are replaced with Mario hearts. That means that in a single Sweet Treat, Mario can get up to 14 health and up to the usual 8 FP. This definitely helps me outlast these guys, but I don't want to sell my godly super guarding abilities short. The next floor offered quite the selection of endgame enemies and another Dark Koo Patrol. Phantom Embers are pretty intimidating since their attacks can be hard to super guard and I can only damage them with hammer and power smash. Swoopulas aren't so bad, but they can heal themselves back up pretty quick due to my low damage output. Chain Chomps are a pain in the ass to deal with since they can only be super guarded and have a lot of health. I know that sounded like a lot of complaining, but honestly this floor wasn't so bad. I pretty much dealt with each threat one at a time until I made it to the other side. I made sure to put on Zap Tap for any future encounters with Swoopulas since the electric status makes them take one damage and not steal any life whenever they try to attack Mario. My next stroke of luck in the pit came on this floor right here. You'll see that the Chain Chomp is holding a Defend Plus badge and the Dark Coup Patrol has a P Up D Down badge. Both of these items are similar to the HP Plus P from earlier because there's a 1% chance for either of these items to be held in battle and then a 25% chance for one of them to drop afterwards. I defeated these enemies and to my surprise I got the P Up D Down badge as a drop after the fight. There's no f***ing way! There's no way that actually dropped! That's so strong. This badge is an absolute godsend because it's basically a power plus badge that drops Mario's defense by one, but it only costs two BP to use. Since Mario takes a load of damage anyways, this defense drop really isn't that big of a deal. Getting this drop right here was a 1 in 100 for him to hold it, another 1 in 4 for the game to decide to drop a held item, and then another 1 in 2 for it to pick the P up D down over the defend plus. After that incident a few floors ago, I was pretty convinced the game hated me, but apparently somebody's out there watching over me. A few floors later though, I encountered this battle. This was the worst case scenario. Taking out the combined 50 health of these guys using only 5 damage power smashes meant that I had to survive at least 10 turns with these guys, if not more when I had to take healing turns, and let me tell you, I had to take healing turns. <sighs> Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna power smash and hope that the fright mask scares at least one of them away. Actually, preferably all five. Please. Please, last fright mask, please. It scared the one that had one health, why? How did I miss that? That's such an easy timing. This is so, so bad for me. This very well could be the hardest battle in the whole thing. Okay, I just need to hit some of these. Okay. Okay. Good. Just need to keep using power smashes. 
Okay, I'm most likely gonna miss in the fog anyways, because the fog loves to just f over um, the player more than the enemies. So I'm just gonna take this time to heal up a little bit. Okay, that's not useless. It's not useful either, actually. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll take the damage. I don't want to take that damage. All three of them hit me through the fog on the s hardest super guard timing in the game. Dude, me raw and dry. Make it hurt. I'm not putting that in my YouTube video. I'm gonna use this on Mario just in case I get so unlucky and all three of them hit me and I can't super guard. I'm playing it safe. I'm so scared of this fight. Okay, I missed that one, but he's dead. They all hit through the fog on this turn. Actually messed up. I should have put Kumbel in the front. Oh, f I need a lucky or a super guard to survive. Oh no. More fog? That's actually somehow also an option that would help me that I didn't even consider. Okay, okay, we're good. We live, we live. We live. We're never dying. I missed so many of those in that fight. That, that might be the hardest fight that I have. And now the next one is an uphill f***ing battle because I have six health on Mario. Okay, well, seven health on- eight, eight, eight health on Mario. At this point in the run, I couldn't imagine getting fights much harder than that one, but I still had over 20 floors to go. I blasted through the next few battles, all of which were similar to what you just saw, and then I grabbed the bump attack badge on floor 80, which is totally useless in the pit. This far into the prologue pit, each encounter starts to become a huge time commitment. Every enemy has tons of health, way too much attack, and basically demands almost perfection when it comes to super guards. I'm immediately hit with a 4-pack of Spunias, which are pretty capable of blasting my ass wide open. Fire Drive is our old reliable at this point, so it's just a matter of being a god gamer and surviving longer than they can. The next floor had two Dark Bristles, which are the last enemy in the pit that I'm forced to super guard to death, but of course they're also the strongest. I kept the Zap Tap badge on for this fight so that they would still take one damage even if I missed the super guard and took damage myself. Now I actually think that this fight works a little bit better if you watch what happened in the moment, so I'm gonna shut up for a sec. Good. Sure. I'm okay with luckies because it just gives more chances where I don't take damage if I were to f*** up. Oh, thanks for the dried shroom, dude. Appreciate it. I shouldn't have had the PFD down badge on for this fight in retrospect, but it's fine. Good. Good. I need to game so hard right now. Oh, that was my first damage! No, I didn't want to say anything! I didn't want to say anything because it was going so beautifully. I'm like so much more sad than if I got hit multiple times. F I was so good for so long. Dude, I am still insane though for not missing any of those. Like, yeah, it's an easy one to time, but I just hit like 15 of them in a row or whatever the f this is really the point in the pit where I started to get super nervous because I had about three-ish hours sunk in at this point, and even one chain of missing too many super guards could send me right back to the very beginning. But still, that didn't stop me from being the absolute clutch master and obliterating these guys with nothing but sheer will, determination, and some three-frame inputs. The next floor was another pretty bad scenario. Four Arantulas. These guys are capable of dealing huge amounts of damage and their super guards can be pretty tricky to time. They also have an absolute sh ton of health and can move in and out of fire drive range. There really was no clever strategy for any of the fights on this set of floors, I simply had to deal consistent damage, heal enough with sweet treat, and pop off with the super guards in order to stay alive. I got down to the last Arantula and he hit Mario down to just a single point of health. And for some reason, I really cannot tell you what was going through my mind, I chose this exact moment to be greedy and go for the kill instead of healing up. I was pretty sure that he was low enough to be killed by my power plus jump attack, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, let's um, let's not do any more risky stuff like that, buddy. The next floor had the first piranha plant, which is strong but pretty easy to super guard so it's not too big of a deal. After that, I encountered 5 Spunias in a single battle. At this point, I gotta say, I was plugged the f*** 
in and completely focused on my super guard inputs. I mean seriously, look how intensely I'm pressing the B button. That's a real gamer right there. I plowed through the Spunias, and then a couple more of them with some Arantulas, I super guarded two more Dark Bristles to death, I incinerated a Piranha Plant and his spidery friends, and then finally I made it to the last battle of these floors. Floor 90 has the Lucky Day badge which is so unbelievably strong. Stacking this with my pretty luckies gives me somewhere in the neighborhood of a 40% evasion chance. I don't know exactly what the math works out to, but it's very, very good. If you got the Lucky Day badge from the Happy Lucky Lottery also, I can only imagine how overpowered your evasion would be with two Lucky Days and two Pretty Luckies. Now, let's stop talking about badges and start taking on the final set of floors. Now this first battle wasn't incredibly hard, but it was what I would describe as incredibly goofy. The encounter spawned with two elite wizards and a swampire. The swampire was holding a ruin powder, which is an item that confuses your characters. After he used it, Mario avoided it with a lucky, but Goombella got confused. Goombella was almost dead weight at this point anyways, so I just ignored her and let Mario go for another fire drive. Well, apparently, this can happen. I had totally forgotten that your characters can run away while confused, and running away totally resets the encounter. So let's go back in. The first turn played out very similar to the last one, except this time Mario also got confused. I tried to use a sweet treat to heal the confusion, but Mario f offed Goombella instead. On the next turn, Mario decided to run away. Again. You know what, I'm a fair man, I can look back on this and say that it was pretty funny, but I gotta tell you, it was not very funny in the moment. Anyways, on the third attempt, I finally managed to get past this hurdle and killed both elite wizards. The Swampire has an ungodly amount of health and he can heal himself, but luckily I can use Zap Tap to make him totally useless. On floor 92, I ran into four Poison Puffs, which is a wall of 60 health standing between me and the next floor. I was hoping that more of them would start floating down so that I could hit more of them with Fire Drive, but I was not that fortunate. When these guys charge up, they can do 10 damage with their big poison attack, which is pretty entertaining because it just one-shots Goombella. She's trying her best, guys. Don't make fun of her. On the final turn of the battle, I had only 7 health, meaning that if I didn't get a Lucky or if I didn't hit the Super Guard, it was GG for me. It came down to this. F*** it, we f***ing ball. I'm gonna get a Lucky. Odds are. Yes! I should have done that! I should not have done that! Thank god I got a level up from this battle, because going into the next fight with 7 health and a dead Goombella would have been actually awful. Luckily, Floor 93 was super easy because the fight just had 2 Bobolks and an Elite Wizard. Just like Bulky Bomb Bombs, they can be blown up early with fire, dealing 4 damage to everyone on screen instead of 2 like the regular Bulky Bomb Bombs. This leaves a Burnt Elite Wizard on screen, which does this. These guys will pretty much always use the illusion move when there's one of them left, and then the fire just stun locks them and prevents the illusion from staying. Much, much easier than the last floor. Floor 94 was technically one of the easiest floors in the whole pit so far, but it did take a while. If you put 5 Swampires against 1 Mario with Zap Tap, 5 Swampires are gonna lose every single time. Goombella is once again dead weight here, so once she goes down, it just becomes a matter of slowly dealing the 100 damage necessary to kill all of these guys. 95 was a relatively simple encounter with an Elite Wizard and 2 more Poison Puffs. The Elite Wizard was easy to kill, and then after hitting a legendary Super Guard on what I think is one of the hardest attacks to nail in the whole game, both of the Puffs went into Fire Drive range, making for another relatively easy battle. The next floor had one of these mother on it. Amazy Daisies can do 20 damage in one hit and put you to sleep, but they have a high chance of running away, so all I could do was play the first turn as if it was going to run away, and then cross my fingers. <sighs> what a little bitch. I cleaned up the rest of that floor and then got into a battle with four Bobolks. I detonated all of them with Fire Drive, and to my amazement, Three luckies? I, g I only took five damage to take out that whole fight. Floor 98 had two Amazy Daisies this time, so I hit everyone with a fire drive and then tattled one of the daisies just for the flex, and then I crossed my fingers. 
Once again, shoutouts to whoever's up there looking out for me because both daisies ran away without attacking me. The last floor before Bonetail hit me with five elite wizards, with two of them holding shooting star items. The funny thing about the items is that those are actually weaker than their regular attacks, so if they chose to use them, I may not be able to super guard them, but I could get luckies and they could miss anyways. I hit them with a fire drive and then used the final thunder rage I had acquired from the merchant along the way. Somehow, Goombella actually managed to survive that turn, so I finished off the wizards and actually had a pretty healthy Mario and Goombella for going into the final floor. And now, the moment that probably at least one or two of you have been waiting for, it's time to take on Bonetail himself. Goombella's tattle for Bonetail says that he is the oldest brother of Hooktail, but honestly, what the f*** even is a Hooktail? This Mario has never been to Petal Meadows, therefore Hooktail doesn't even exist as a concept for him. You probably all know Bonetail's stats, but it's still worth pointing out that 200 HP is going to take a while to get through, not to mention the potential healing he can do later. Fire Drive is my beloved as always, and it is the best option for damaging Bonetail. With my P-Up D-Down badge, Mario can deal 6 damage per attack, plus an additional 1 damage for each turn that Bonetail is burned. Bonetail's damage output isn't really that big of a threat, because even with my defense down by 1, he only deals 9 damage per hit to Mario, but he misses roughly 40% of the time due to my lucky badges. His super guard timings aren't too hard, I'd say the stomp attack is maybe a 3 out of 10 difficulty to super guard, and the breath is maybe a 5 or a 6. The bite attack can't be super guarded, but the lucky badges can still avoid it. This fight really is much more of a marathon than a sprint. It's all about keeping a good rhythm between doing damage, healing with sweet treat, and appealing so I can get my star power back up. Those three super appeal badges that I got at the very beginning of the game really shine here, because like I mentioned earlier, they let me heal a whole star power gauge with just one appeal. Goombella goes down pretty early in the fight, but that's actually a good thing since her being alive was a little bit of a liability to Mario. With her down, I can get up to 14 HP for Mario from each sweet treat, which makes it so much easier to outlast Bonetail's damage output. All I needed at this point was to execute the fight well, and to not get horribly unlucky. I had to pretty much not miss any fire drives, which is fine because the action command is basically free. I had to not screw up too many sweet treats, which is actually pretty difficult when you're trying to max them out as hard as I was. And I had to not miss too many super guards, otherwise I would take too much damage. And so, with all of that in mind, here's how it went. Alright, big if true. F*** it. F*** it, we've all. Mario's invincible. That still hit through all of that, and I blocked it, because I'm a god gamer. Nice, I hit the super guard. My audience is gone? Oh no. Oh, some of them did come back. I actually- you really, really need the audience in this fight. I forgot about that. Dude, that guy's gonna blow up again, and I'm gonna be out a crowd again. Alright, rip Goombella. The plan will have to work without Goombella. I knew she was gonna go down at some point, but now Mario's healing is giga healing. The bite! Yes, I got the lucky on the bite! Oh, my crowd being gone, though. F Dude, I need an audience again. They're just gone. Dude, why is he doing that? What? Who's, who hired you? Bonetail hired him. Wait, the amount of members of the audience you have doesn't matter? I still fully healed my star power from that? Okay. Maybe I think I'm just stupid. Actually, I think I remember that. So I just gotta keep topping up my FP to do damage. Dude, I can't- I can't get hit, I'm invincible! Alright, good. Hitting some super guards is important. The luckies are such a crutch for this. This would be so- this would be like, actually 10 times harder without the luckies. You just wouldn't have room to miss like, any super guards. Like, the luckies really pick up a lot of slack in terms of- having um uh, or like super guards even if you miss some yeah i'm gonna need some luckies i'm starting to fall behind on health a little bit here all right baby mario's got this are the stars actually flying from a smaller hitbox or am i crazy like are the sweet treat stars flying from lower my like thumb actually hurts from doing sweet treat probably over a hundred times today another bomb i'm trying to explode my crowd what are actually the odds of this because i feel like this effect is not that common Three out of three on the bites, yes. I'm so glad after some of those traumatic floors I went through, I'm finally getting some semblance of luck. Four out of four on the bites, yes! This is such a payoff right now. This, like, this is an arc. 
I, I had horrendous luck on some of those floors, as, as you saw. You've been watching this far if you're watching right now. You saw that f***ing luck. Five out of five on the bites. You can't make this up. It's only like a 40% and I've hit all five of the bites with a lucky. Okay, you know, five out of six still ain't bad. Let's just, let's just put that out there. <laughs> five out of six isn't bad. All of my sweet treats in this fight have been absolute fire so far. I don't think I've hit a single poison shroom. See you later, audience. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. That's like the fifth or sixth time my entire audience has passed away. Okay, as long as he doesn't heal on this turn, I win. The lucky bite. The lucky bite. Okay, just need to not miss the fire drive. Come on. Come on. First fucking try. I did this first try. There I saw a thumbnail on YouTube that said, Is this the hardest Paper Mario challenge? No, I did it first try. I literally did it first try. It's been like four hours, four to five hours in the making. I did it first try. Oh my god, I am tremendously proud of how I played. Like, some of those clips where I super guarded a billion things in a row, my heart was f***ing racing, dude. There were a couple stupid risky plays that I made that I deserved to die at and I didn't. I got the f***ing return postage badge. I did it. Oh, that feels so good. I realistically... If, if I got less lucky in some parts, I could have been at this for... I could see this happening for several attempts. There were... Everything kind of came together. Five and a half hours on this save file. That includes the prep. Uh, I don't know exactly what the final runtime was, but it was... I think I entered the pit at less than an hour on this file. There was a little bit of pause time while I um, ate dinner, but like... It was probably about four hours of gameplay. It's pretty long when you don't have stats. The craziest things, though, are this P up, D down in this HP plus P. The odds of those dropping are so astronomically low, and they were both useful. I could have been doing this for days, and it was so scared of that every time I came close to dying. I was like, fuck, dude. Fuck. You know, like, being, like, three hours in on, like, floor 80, and almost losing is just so scary. I'm recording this part that you're watching right now days later, and I gotta say, I'm still pretty floored that I actually managed to pull this off first try. Several years ago, and I wanna say like maybe seven or eight, I did the pre-hook tail pit of 100 trials challenge, which is a lot easier than the prologue pit because you have access to coops and the Mega Rush P badge and a few other things. And honestly, if you're looking to do this challenge just for fun and not really looking for any prestige or trying to make a video or anything, that's actually the version that I'd recommend doing. It is still super difficult, but it doesn't require any glitches to access the pit and it just takes a little bit less time and I think it's a little more fun. Either way though, I'm pretty proud of myself for how many super guards I was able to hit and I think my decision making in terms of when to use sweet treats and when to use what moves was overall super solid. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed going on this journey with me and I hope that it was even half as much of an emotional roller coaster for you as it was for me. Like seriously, the pressure of the time investment alone just got worse and worse as each floor went on. Go ahead and let me know if you have any more challenge ideas that you want to see me do with this game because honestly, I'm always down to play this game in more and more f***ed up ways. I already do have a few more things planned for this game coming up soon, so if you're interested in that, be sure to stick around, maybe give me a little subscribe, and definitely like this video because it helps support the channel a lot. Anyways, that's gonna be a big fat GG from me, homies.